Welcome to the Richesum Reverse Engineering Channel. In this video, you're going to see this smart meter's design is vulnerable to a glitch attack. I'll demonstrate how the glitch works and why the wire links and timing parameters used are critical to replicating this attack. A few videos back, you saw me use a development board to test out the concept of a glitch attack. The goal was to get a copy of the firmware loaded onto the processor. That attack was successful, and I was able to get a copy of the program I loaded onto the board. I did this by logging all the data being sent using a serial port and glitching it while it was trying to print a message to the screen. This glitch was timed just right so the processor printed out the entire contents of its flash memory instead of only printing the message it was supposed to. But why am I now focused on a process to get a copy of the firmware and share it with everyone? I already have quite a few videos in this series analyzing the frequency hopping mesh network they use to communicate and the fact that some meters actually transmit their GPS coordinates along with the last time they lost power, which I received while driving down the road. I also looked at the design of the hardware, such as this disconnect switch, that can be used to turn power on and off to your house remotely. I feel the outside blind analysis has gone as far as it can. To learn how to decode the power usage data, what encryption algorithms and keys are in use, and ultimately, if a malicious actor could turn your power off remotely, we need to reverse engineer the firmware. The next step in the process was to take the test code I wrote and programmed into this development board and load it onto an actual smart meter, which I did in the last video. Now I am adding the glitching cable connector, along with changing how I am triggering the glitch. Previously, I was triggering it by controlling a data line in the code which the chip whisperer would use as the start of its glitching timer. For test purposes, this made the attack easier and more predictable. I won't have this luxury when attacking the actual smart meter code, however, so I changed the setup to trigger off of the reset line. In the new glitching setup, I base my timing off of the moment the processor starts booting up, which I also control by changing the voltage applied to this reset line. This has the benefit of not needing to know anything about what the processor is doing while it boots up. The downside I have seen though, is the attacks are a little less predictable, meaning it can take a few tries even with the exact same parameters. Now let's take a quick detour to look at something interesting when it comes to voltage glitching. The concept of voltage glitching is really very simple. We are momentarily dropping the core voltage in hopes of causing erratic behavior. When doing this though, it's easy to get it slightly wrong and just reboot the processor or cause nothing to happen at all. I put together this simple test to demonstrate how just changing the length of wire used completely changes the profile of the glitch. The power supply used is set to 1.2 volts and there's a one microfarad capacitor on the connector to simulate the decoupling capacitors on an actual device. The only thing that will change during the test is to install each one of these cables. You can see when I was preparing the test meter that I cut two cables exactly the same. This is to ensure the parameters I discover during this test are transferable to the smart meter with factory firmware on it. I won't have the luxury of feedback like I do with my own code running. Let's start with the length of wire close to the one I am using on the smart meter. Sending a glitch gives us a baseline to look at. There are two signals we are seeing on the oscilloscope. The yellow one on the top is connected right at the point of our simulated test board to show the effects of the glitch on the device itself. The purple one is connected to the source of the glitch, the chip whisperer. Each time we run this test, the purple one is going to look the same but the yellow one will vary depending on the length of wire used. This oscilloscope capture shows the change in voltage on the y-axis, 
plotted against the change in time on the x-axis. In the bottom right, we see the time per division is 50 nanoseconds, and voltage for division for each trace is shown in the bottom left. The divisions are represented by the faint grid shown on the screen. I also have the top trace shown twice as large so we can see the capacitor discharge curve better. Placing some cursors on the screen, we can see it took about 200 nanoseconds for the voltage to drop from 1.2 volts to about 0.1 volts. If we look at it the other way, the processor could probably be in an unknown state for about 250 nanoseconds before the voltage jumps back up. Now looking at the capture for the long wire, there are a couple things of interest. First, the yellow trace never manages to get down to zero volts. The lowest it goes is about 500 millivolts, or a half a volt. The second is since the wire is so long, the glitch has to be longer if we want to drop the voltage all the way down. This means with a longer wire, we can't be as precise with our glitch. With the shortest wire, we see the yellow trace fall very quickly. In about 100 nanoseconds, it's almost to zero volts and stays there for the remaining 200 nanoseconds until the glitch is over. Even with the same amount of capacitance, our ability to inject a very short glitch is possible using a very short connection to the target board. Now, let's get back to glitching the actual smart meter board. Using this new reset line based timing, I had to create a short glitching loop that tries different timing values until something interesting happens. Initially, I guessed values until I saw I was causing a glitch at the moment it was printing text to the screen. This is the point I want to glitch, since I know from my prior tests that the firmware gets dumped if I hit this routine in just the right spot. I haven't automated this process beyond that, so when I see the serial port start to blast data, I break out of the routine so I don't reboot the processor. Since I am timing my glitch off the reset line, every test reboots the chip. The plus side of this is if my glitch causes the processor to freeze up for some reason, the next test reboots it. Watching the screen, it doesn't take long before I see the glitch work and break out of the Python loop using Control c I use this command in the terminal window to log everything being dumped to a file. In the next episode, I will wire up this smart meter with the same glitch cable and reset line setup. I will also wire up an FTDI serial port adapter to see if I can cause a similar issue when the meter is communicating with this Zigbee chip. I haven't yet hunt for any other serial ports. The CC1200 and Serial EEPROM appear to share the same SPI bus, so that's out of the question for now. I could also try adding a JTAG connector to this meter and seeing if glitching it upon boot somehow restores the JTAG access. Considering the chip is completely locked down, testing this theory would probably be better done on the development board I have or the test meter I reprogrammed. This way, if I screw something up, I don't lose the factory firmware I am trying to dump. After all, buying smart meters can get expensive even for a baller. If you like this video, make sure to leave a comment and subscribe. I use your questions and comments to inspire future videos and set the direction of my research. For detailed images and documentation, make sure to check out the Richesum Wiki, and join the Discord if you feel like chatting with other people about projects you're working on. I live my life a quarter mile at a time. If you live your life 15 seconds at a time, you can also find me on TikTok. Thanks for watching.